show-stopping second test flight, Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket stuck its landing. New Glenn nailed its landing on Jacqueline, Blue Origin's drone ship, which was stationed about 375 miles offshore. In the process of all this, New Glenn successfully sent NASA's escapade mission to Mars in what will be an 11th-month journey to get there. Joining us now for the first time ever on Yahoo Finance for today's power player is Blue Origin CEO David Limp. David took over as CEO in December 23. 2023. He had spent years leading Amazon devices, including spearheading the launch of Alexa. David, good to see you here. I, I can't even imagine what it takes to pull something like this off. Help us understand, like, what did you exactly achieve and how did you arrive at this point? Yeah, this was our second flight for New Glenn, which is our large rocket. And this is a, this is a beast of a rocket. It's uh, over 320 feet tall. Uh, you know, uh, millions of pounds of thrust. And we were able to uh, yeah, not only get it to orbit, uh, get our customers successfully on their way to Mars, and NASA in this case, but also the first uh, commercial company to uh, land a booster, uh, an orbital class booster on their second attempt here. It was just an amazing uh, accomplishment by the whole team. And, and to be frank, a watershed moment for Blue Origin. That, that hour before the rocket launch, what are you doing as CEO? Well, uh, about an hour before we get on console with the rest of the team. So we're in mission control, listening to the countdown and, uh, you know, and kind of helping out with anomalies. Mostly the team's doing it. If everything's working properly, it's quiet. And uh, we had uh, we had one quick uh, uh, scrub right before that happened at about T minus 10 seconds. Uh, we recycled, which we have the ability to do. We fixed that little uh, little bit check that that didn't pass, and then we were ready for launch. And so I'm listening in, like everybody else, uh, and uh, you know, kind of cr crossing my fingers, like everybody else too. It's 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 an anxiety filled moment for sure. And then by the same token, when that rocket lands on that barge, uh, codenamed Jacqueline, what are your what were some of your first thoughts? Well, you know, you, 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 there's a lot of work that goes into leading up to this, and we do a huge amount of simulations. The Monte Carlo simulations say that it's a high probability that this is going to happen, that we're going to land, but you're never sure. Rockets are hard, space is hard, and uh, when that dust cleared and we saw uh, uh, the booster, never tell me the odds, sit there on Jacqueline intact, it was, it was, I was ecstatic. And over the moon for the team uh, and for Jeff, who founded this company, but uh, to be honest you kind of had to quickly turn and pivot because the mission was still going on we we had we still had the second stage to do another burn we had to get the payloads to orbit so it was kind of back to work really quickly later that night i i, I had a chance to celebrate with the team but uh, right, right afterwards it was back to work dave for uh, for us humans like you and me still on earth why is mars so important you know, I think the moon and Mars are really important. You know, we've we've sent probes to all these different places, but if we really want to get uh, to a point where, which is our mission at Blue, to get millions of people working in space, we have to build the infrastructure to get off this planet. And uh, the stepping stone is the moon. And our next mission, or the one right after that, we're going to be spend, sending the largest lander ever to the moon. Uh, that'll happen early next year. And then beyond that, once we, we once we build bases on the moon, we have water on the moon, we can build fuel on the moon, and that can be a stepping stone to Mars and the rest of the solar system. And, and that allows us to build a infrastructure in space that can take heavy industry off the Earth and we can enjoy the planet for what it is. Settle this debate for me. So last week I had uh, Alexis Ohanian uh, on for our invest event, and he said we might build data centers in space. Is that is that even possible in our lifetime? Oh, it's going to happen uh, for sure in our lifetime. The, the, the wonderful thing about space is that you, you have an infinite energy source in the sun. It is uh, by far the best energy source we have, and uh, we can harness that through known technology, solar panels, and then beam that and beam that energy back to back to Earth, or beam the data back to Earth. And we have high-speed data links in the forms of lasers. And so, um, you know, increasingly these data centers that are getting built are are starved for power on on Earth. And uh, it just makes sense that over time they'll migrate to space. And I don't think it's going to happen next year, but over the next five to ten years, you're going to see that that come to fruition for sure. Would they look like what we're building here? Are you talking like physical? Warehouses with servers in it? 
Yeah, I think you you know you'll look at them. Uh, they'll they'll be shaped differently because they'll be on spacecraft, but uh, and they have to be cooled differently. And the one of the dirty little secrets about space is it's very cold, but it's it can also be very hot. So we'll have to figure out how to dissipate the heat. But these will be big structures in space, uh, linked together through laser comm links, and then beaming that data back down to Earth. Yeah. Dave, if I have my math right, you're coming up uh, December will be two years as CEO of Blue Origin. I mean, you didn't need to be sending rockets. I mean, you had an accomplished career over at Amazon, uh, helping to launch Alexa and leading consumer devices. Uh, why did you take this job? And what have you? Uh, what has it been like the past almost two years? Yeah, I spent 30 years of, uh, in in consumer electronics. I loved it. I'm Apple and Palm and 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 uh, finally at Amazon for f almost 14 years. I, I just thought I knew I had energy left in me and I wanted to do something new. And uh, the really the only tenant I had when I started looking after I left Amazon was I wanted to do something that if 99 out of 100 people, if I told them what I did, they would think that we, I was giving back to, to, to society in some way. And uh, when I had known Jeff, obviously worked for him for 15 years uh, and uh, the CEO transition was happening here and he asked whether I'd take the job. My first instinct was I wasn't a rocket scientist, maybe it wasn't right, but it turns out what Blue really needed, and, and I think Jeff's instincts were right, was uh, somebody that understands manufacturing. We want to be the world's best manufacturing company here in the United States. And, uh, you know, manufacturing con uh, in, uh, consumer electronics and rockets, it's a different scale, but the problems are, uh, are the same. And so hopefully I've brought a little bit of that to Blue. And, uh, two years has just been amazing. It's gone gone by so fast, and you know, it's I, it was certainly my boy here dream to think about rockets, and now to be able to get up every day and help build them with the team. It's just it's amazing. I'm pinching myself every day. So a big drop the mic here moment uh, for Blue Origin before you're in. What does 2026 look like? How many law how many rockets do you plan on launching? And then what are some of the barriers that you have to cross over to, to I imagine to pick up the pace of these launches? Yeah, there's never been more demand. So we do not have a demand problem out there. The uh, customers want to, uh, these mega constellations want to fly. Amazon has Leo, uh, AST has theirs. Um, there's a, and we have a backlog of, of, of a large number of customers. So for us, it is just a ramping production uh, issue. And so we've now proven the technology works. Uh, that landing was, uh, when there was no better proof than that. And so really it's getting the factories to start hum, humming. And they, they have already on our engine side, we're, we're developing and producing engines really fast. And now it's getting boosters and second stages out and then learning the refurb process, the refurb uh, process as we recover these boosters and bring them back. Uh, never tell me the odds will be arriving at port tomorrow morning. We'll get a look at uh, what, what, the, what the ship looks like and we'll turn it around and fly it again. And like I said, our next, next mission or the one right after that early next year is going to be a, a, a big lander to the moon. And we really uh, can't wait to have uh, presence back on the moon again. Uh, David, not so many executives get to work uh, so closely with really, I mean, a visionary like a Jeff Bezos. I mean, this is what he is. What makes Jeff Bezos Jeff Bezos? And what does he bring every day inside of Blue Origin? You know, I, I, two things I find uh, just amazing about him is first, he's the most tactically impatient person I've ever met, but the most strategically patient person I met. So he will uh, drive for excellence in the near term, but he has the ability to look very long uh, over very long horizons. One of my favorite sound bites from him is all of Amazon's overnight successes took about 10 years. And, and, that, and that's the way he tends to think like that. But I would say on top of that, uh, Jeff is the most curious person I've ever met. And so uh, when he uh, wants to go down the rabbit hole on an idea, he will, he will bite into it and go, go the distance and, and learn uh, and become an expert on that topic. And the combination of those two traits uh, make him a very unique individual for sure. Well, I very much looking, uh, am looking forward to following uh, your continued journey next year. It looks like exciting times for Blue Origin. David Limp, congratulations again. We appreciate it. Thanks, Brian.